let's take a look more specifically at courses. So when you log in, it's going to show you your course dashboard. And these courses are pre-populated by Skyward. Unless, of course, they have been created separate from Skyward, like my course was, and then you've joined that particular course. So I'm going to use this Squology Basics as an example as we get going here. If I start in the upper left-hand corner, you can see I can edit the picture of a course. Obviously, this will get me back to the beginning of my course if I've clicked off into other things. I go all the way over to the right-hand side. I can switch between courses quickly. And under notifications, this is how I can set my email notifications. So if I want to receive emails for specific things, I can set that and save those. If I look across the top here, this add materials, and it's also materials on the left-hand side, Materials is where you will spend a great deal of time creating, and we're going to look at that separately. That was briefly mentioned in resources as well, that you can do your creation in resources. It doesn't have to be in a specific course. For options, we can choose to turn on student completion. So if you're keeping track of um, certain things as far as they have to do one to get to the next, like this course is set up, that's what that's about. And then I can also save a course to resources. So remember, courses may disappear after a semester or a year because you bring new courses in through Skyward. But if you save the information to resources, you can pull it into another course easily. Now, because I have this set up to student completion, so you notice here that says this must complete, the student must complete, I can click on student progress and it's going to show me my students in my course and what progress they've made as far as completion is concerned. So that's pretty nice when students are working independently. Along the right-hand side, you'll see upcoming, so assignments and things like that. Students will have that as well. So along here, you're going to see uh, the left-hand side updates, gradebook. And again, gradebook is going to be tied to Skyward on this part of a grade setup. Mastery would be if you're doing more of a standards base, so you can put your learning objectives in there and see how they're mastering their objectives. Badges is how you can reward students with different badges, whether you use what they have or you add your own badges, you can do that. Um, attendance and members. So this one's kind of nice. There's a couple of things in here which can be quite handy. Uh, first of all, obviously it's gonna tell you everyone who's in your class, but you can send a message directly here. But what I thought was really nice is that you can preview the course from the student's perspective. So I can click preview course and then it says up here, this is how your course looks to Melissa Haas. And then I can see what it looks like from the student perspective, which I think is always really nice since I want to make sure that I'm setting things correctly so that students can see it correctly. So if I go back into members and I click this little gear again, I also have the ability as a uh, teacher, I can change password. Now we're using Google single sign-on, so we probably won't be changing passwords at all since they'll be signing in with their Google accounts. Um, I could make someone an administrator of my class if I wanted to, or unenroll them from my class as well. So I did mention that classes are created from Skyward, but you as teachers are allowed to create separate courses outside of Skyward if you were doing it for another activity or something like that. You'll notice that the access code is showing here, and that's also in the bottom left-hand corner. So our, again, our students will be pre-populated in our regular courses because of Skyward, but if you were creating a non-Skyward type of class, you could distribute this code and have them join. What's also pretty cool is this organize members into grading groups. So you can actually create small groups within your class and you can give the group a name and you can select specific people to create a grading group. So this might be good if you're working on maybe some small projects or some differentiated learning. Maybe some students in there get special testing and so you want to assign them a different test. You can actually create those grading groups right in here. And when you assign, you can pull those out by name. So that makes it kind of nice too. If I go back over to the left-hand side, the analytics, you can actually see who has been into your course. 
and when's the last time that they've actually been into Esquology altogether or last time they've accessed your course materials. So that's kind of uh, interesting and helpful as well. Finally, in this bottom left-hand side, if I go to workload planning, I can look at my students and see what their workload is like. And that's a kind of amazing tool too when you think about it. If teachers are really using Schoology to put in their lessons, then you can go and say, if I want to put something on um, Friday, May 29th, and I look and see that my students are really overloaded with work at that time, then I could maybe rethink and choose a different due date for that. So again, a pretty amazing tool. So that's kind of the overview of courses, and we'll come back and look at materials in a separate video.